A few weeks ago, I asked you guys to start participating in my color grading tutorials by sending me your footage so I can show you guys exactly how I would apply my technique to footage you've shot. And I was honestly blown away by the amount of footage I received in my email just minutes after I posted that video. But the one thing I noticed is that the footage you guys were having the hardest time color grading was all shot and log. So on this episode of Color Grading Your Footage, I'm going to show you how to exposure correct any log footage in a matter of seconds and get the most dynamic range out of footage you thought probably couldn't be recovered. But first, roll intro. What's good everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international photographer and cinematographer. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to be using the color space transform tool to exposure correct your images. And then I'm gonna show you guys on a few clips maybe how I would apply some looks as well and go about making some minor corrections as you would grade any other log footage. So without further ado, so our first clip is from Van Ferreren. They sent me this footage from the Philippines. So I'm going to show you guys just exactly how this tool works. I'm going to get to a point in the clip right there because this was what I was looking for. So this was shot in hybrid log gamma. So in the input color space and input gamma, you want to put what you shot your footage in. Because Blackmagic doesn't have a hybrid log gamma um, option, I chose simply the S Sony S gamut for the input color space and the input gamma as Sony S log. What I transform that to is what matters the most. So the output color space goes into, you're not gonna believe it, Black Magic Design 4K Video Gen 3. And then I'm going to select RE Log C as my output gamma. Now you're as maybe ask me why. Make sure you add another serial node. That is because RE Log C is going to retain these shadows and retain these highlights a lot better than if we were to do my traditional grades off of the log wheel. You'll see that in a second. So what we do now is we simply just transform that into Rec 709. So we're going to select exactly what we had our output as, as our input. So Blackmagic Design Video uh, Gen 3 4K in RE Log C to an output color space of Rec 709 and an output gamma of Rec 709. Now you're like, oh, that looks horrible. Well, now what we do is called luminance mapping. And now it doesn't look so horrible. Do you see how great that looks just off the bat? Now, the only thing that I'm going to change, first let me add my output linking, make this a little bit more cinematic, is the fact that her skin tones have a little bit of a green hint. And then I'm gonna add a look. So again, um, I'm gonna add some saturation here too. Just a smidge, smidge of saturation. And then I'm gonna go through in another node. Let me turn this off. This is why I color grade in an ultra wide format because I have a hard time keeping all my nodes in check. Node four right here, we're gonna qualify our skin tones. So simply select them. And that looks pretty decent. I'm gonna go ahead and add the selection on her shoulder right here. So that's gonna change this too, which is fine. That's gonna complement the scene. That is all fine and good. We're just gonna do quite a bit of denoising, some clean whites to make sure her skin is really selected. And I always push my denoising up to 100%. People yell at me for that, but it works for my particular style. Then at a 0.6 in the low range, somebody in my comments told me that works and it really does. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this off. And because I can't quite use the skin tone indicator because we're in this log, uh, RE log format, we can. I'm gonna show you, but you're gonna have to come back and adjust the hue later. So come back here in your power window so that it just shows you what you're doing here. And then just move that so it's right above the line right about there. You want that little exposure value to move above the line waveform. Turn this off the power window and then turn off just the selection. And you can see here kind of how that made her skin tones just a little bit more uh, magenta, which is what we were trying to get that green out. I'm gonna go through actually and undo some of the saturation I put in, maybe only like 55. And then, yep, yeah, just gonna tweak that, just as need it. Right about there is where I like it. So you can see that change from there to there, which is pretty nice. And then the overall change, again, a very nicely graded image. You can also, in this first note, just up the exposure just a bit on her, on this entire clip, which is what I wanna do. And then I'm gonna simply add my look. 
And that is going to be my same adding two corrector nodes, which is going to serve as a layer and a layer mixer node. So I connect this green dot here, so that transfers over. The blue dot is actually the alpha output. That basically keys out whatever you want keyed. Um, so if you had a green screen, you would simply select add alpha output and connect to your keyed out qualified green screen. You connect that blue line from that node that you keyed out to the alpha output. And then simply here, I'm just gonna go through and add a quick look to show you guys something different than teal and orange. You can drop your reds here. You can also drop your greens a bit. And then you just go ahead and add a bit of yellow. It's not the perfect key, but you can see how it kind of gives you the overall look you're going for. And then I'm actually gonna go down here to my first node or my second node over here and just actually drop down that exposure just a bit before, after. So doing the same thing quickly on our next node here, I'm gonna show you guys how we have some detail here that we can retain. It won't be a lot. I'm gonna to have to show you guys my other color method later on how exactly I would go about that. But we're gonna do add color space transform. And here in color space transform, we're gonna do the same thing. Sony S gamut, Sony S log, do black magic video to RE log C. And then in the next one, we're gonna convert that to rec 709. I'm not gonna repeat myself, your time is valuable, so I'm just gonna not explain and go right to it and show you the correction. First, show you what it looks like, then show you the correction. And then make sure we turn on our luminance mapping. So again, ungrade it to grade it. We're retaining a lot of detail here, not as much as I would like in the highlights, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a node where I'm gonna bring down sort of the exposure right here with the offset and we're not gonna retain all the value here. I think it's just stressing the sensor too much, but in my ASICS workflow, which is coming up soon, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how you can do that. And I'm just gonna increase the saturation here. Just to bring some more life in this scene, this is a very sunset cinematic scene. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a node and I'm gonna correct her skin tones because honestly, that's all that that needs. And I can see her skin tones right here are about the same value as the sand. So it's gonna give this beautiful look. I can already see it coming. So I'm gonna go ahead, qualify her skin tones, see what's selected. Again, like I said, it's gonna select some of the sand and even some of the drapery, which is all fine. I'm just gonna make sure we select all of our sand. And if those greens are selected, that's fine too, because I think this is gonna overall complement the scene. Um, and we're just gonna get rid of that green shift that seems to be happening here. So. I'm gonna go into my vector scope. You can if you want to. It's gonna be really hard unless you do this outside of the node transform, which you can. It's just going to, um, not gonna be as much information you're pulling back in, which is why what we're essentially doing here is we're grading in RE log C, then outputting it to rec 709. If you put the node outside for the skin tones, outside of the rec 709 node, you're losing some information that you could have. So I'm just gonna push this in the right direction first. Simply do that. And then I wanna see how it looks. So turn that off, turn that off. I think that's nice, just a little too strong. I want more of an orange right there and maybe just pull down the saturation of the overall scene just a smidge from 74. Something nice like that. I think that's great. You can even take her skin tones. I just like the way the sand looks, which is why I haven't desaturated just her skin tones. So one more thing you can do is you can just pull off just a smidge on that. But honestly, I think that looks really nice from just the few seconds that it took us, the few minutes it actually took us to color grade this clip before, after. It doesn't get much easier than that. So this video is from Mr. Godfrey, all the way out in South Africa. I know, I'm like international now, this is amazing. He sent me this clip, it is shot in S-Log3. This is where I tell you things change. So you can take the Sony s gamma, and now we're gonna select S-Log3. And then we're going to go to Blackmagic Design 4K Video Gen 3 and RE Log C. All that stays the same, we just changed from S-Log3. Now we're gonna add another node, and in our color space transform, we're gonna go to from Black Magic Design Video Gen 3 to RE oh, and RE Log C. Our output becomes our input. Then we go to Rec 709. Simple as that. 
And that does the majority of her corrections. I just think this was slightly overexposed. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm actually gonna have to bring down this exposure. And I'm going to add a node. And on node three, I'm gonna bring down the exposure. You can see beautiful contrast, beautiful dynamic range throughout the waveform. Nothing's clipping on either end. That is mimicking that RE log C look we've all come to know and love. And if you get any noise, you simply denoise your footage. I think all footage should be denoised anyway, and you might be stressing your image sensor or your codec, but the point is, is that you just work with those things for the all the attic dynamic range you get. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another node, and we're simply going to correct his skin tone because if you can't tell, my African brother over here, he is too magenta. And if there's one thing you need to be worried about in your color grading career, nailing black skin tones, it is a art um, to make them not green, to make them not magenta. Um, and we are very particular about the way we look. Even myself when I color grade my skin, cause I'm like, I'm not too dark or I'm not that light. I like my skin tones to be nailed perfectly. And I think that's actually anybody. Nobody wants to come out looking sick. So it's not just a black thing, nail your skin tones. It's just black skin tones tend to be the hardest because the reds in our skin tend to stress out the image sensors of cameras. And we can actually have a whole discussion about the start of photography, which we won't. And I'm just gonna do some clean whites here. I'm gonna use my log wheels, which is the same thing with the offset. I'm gonna go ahead right here. My log wheels, just add a nice orange tint to neutralize kind of what he had going on and maybe a little bit of green there too. Some green and some orange to neutralize him. You can see, neutral black skin tone. It's perfect, maybe just add a quick curve to just give them a little bit more contrast. And that's it. Honestly, for this clip, because we did do so much and it was overexposed, I really wouldn't play with the, the look too much, but you always can, if you would like. You can simply do what I normally do with all my other color grades, just give it a quick look. I know with this clip, I didn't do the best qualification with respect to qualifying out of skin. So if this look looks bad, please forgive me because I'm kind of rushing through this for the sake of time, which I should probably just start cutting to the look, but I wanna show you guys what I do. So again, just dropping those reds, dropping those greens, and upping and uh, oops, and then bringing down the blues. Give it a warm look. Before and after, kind of what you can go for. You can even make your background darker if you want to kind of do something like that. But that looks really unnatural. I think this looks more natural. <laughs> Definitely forget I just said that. That was a horrible idea. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and turn on those post notifications if you have not. And if you have a filmmaker friend or anybody you know who needs to see this tutorial, be sure to share it with them. It helps me out a lot. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Nate, Colin, Dr. D, and Will, all their links are in the description down below. And remember, if you're ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just wanna give up on life, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.